Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. I know that so many of you have been waiting for this video and yeah, finally today we are doing a tour of the Elm Hill City Zoo. Uh, this zoo is not finished by any means, uh, we'll just do an update tour. Uh, we had the last one on the channel over a year ago, so so many things changed into this, in the zoo, so many new habitats are here. So so I really wanted to show you guys all of that uh, and yeah, as I told you guys, this zoo is not finished, we will continue working on it, uh, we will add more and more habitats but I will talk more about the plans for the future at the end of the video so stay tuned for that. So yeah, this is a Christmas time and I decided that this is a perfect gift for you guys uh, for Christmas, the tour of the zoo uh, and also if you'll check down in the description there should be a link uh, to the workshop item to the workshop side of the zoo so yeah from now on you can download the Elm Hill City Zoo and explore it yourself uh, take the bits out of the zoo and use them in your zoos I am really fine with that uh, but take uh, like have it in consideration that this is not finished this is just to show you guys how it looks so we'll do the tour of the entire zoo we'll go into all of the uh, smallest places we will go into all of the buildings all of the backstage areas and so on I really want to show you guys all so this will probably be a longer video but I am sure I am hopeful that you will stay with me and you will watch it till the end uh, so yeah you can explore it yourself in a blueprint or you can do it with me now on a camera on in this video uh, with my live commentary uh, so without further ado let's start the store Every proper zoo tour starts with an entrance, so we are here at the entrance to the Elm Hill City Zoo. This was my first ever video uploaded to YouTube, so uh, yeah, we started this whole journey here by building this. This was heavily inspired by uh, Berlin Zoo. I was just fresh after the, my visit to the Berlin Zoo, so I really wanted to recreate one of the entrances. Uh, so yeah, here we can buy a ticket to the zoo uh, and go inside in there and in here you have a small parking lot uh this probably will change a bit, uh, I will talk about it uh, next, uh, at the end of the video where we will uh, discuss some of the plans for the zoo. But yeah, uh, really nice, I still like it I must say, uh, but yeah, let's move on and let's see our zoo. So we are now entering the Elm Hill City Zoo, we have this lovely fountain in the, uh, in the middle of the plaza. What I also wanted to say is that we'll do this tour in the pause mode because uh, there are some lags in several I did like places so I decided not to uh, like risk it being too laggy uh, and we'll just unpause the game uh, like next to some of the habitats so I think we'll go there first because there are a lot of new habitats that I really want to show you guys uh, this is we on the way we have the gift shop this was the second uh, like video on my channel I still really like the facade of this building I think it's really modern and I really like the look of the Australian wood. I need to use it more often. Um, but yeah, this is the gift shop. Uh, the interior maybe it's not up to the level that I will build it right now, but still really nice. We have the plushies you, the, that were uploaded to the workshop by the keyboard keeper, if I remember it correctly. And we have some gift shops, uh, of course. Here we have one of the newer buildings. As you can see, it is slightly more detailed. I really like this detail in here I must say uh, it was uh, built in here after the billboards were added to the game so uh, we have some uh, billboards on the I don't know global warming about the environment issues about the animal issues just something to educate the guests uh, and we have something like an adoption program here in the zoo so there are some billboards on that and you can go here to those guys uh, to discuss uh, the animal adoption and in here you have like a small classroom, uh, so if for example schools come in here to visit the zoo, uh, they can go here and uh, have this little lecture and there we have a little 
uh, view inside of the first animal that we'll see uh, shortly. But here, if I remember it right, we still have... Why am I stuck? Okay, I'm not stuck. Uh, we have a little backstage for our uh, like educators and people who work here. So we have this like really nice blueprint. This is of the workshop. Uh, this is also of the workshop. And here are the this is the trading center, I think. And here we have nothing. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is a small backstage area for those uh, people working here. Uh, and yeah, let's go and let's see those habitats. Uh, as you guys can see, this part of the zoo is completely not finished, so uh, don't look at that. Uh, but here we have our first enclosure, the red kangaroo one. Um, by the way, you will really see uh, the improvement of my building in t during this uh, tour. Uh, I like this habitat, let's unpause the game for a second, but I think it's not up to the level that I built right now, <laughs> but I still like it. I still like the kangaroos. Uh, I think that this is a really nice area to have the kangaroos next to the entrance. Uh, we have this little like billboard, maybe not so little, uh, on the kangaroos, some information. We have those umbrellas with the feeders, really nice thing. I really like it. Uh, and actually we can now go and see the inside part for those. Uh, here we have a little holding uh, area, uh, one of them is so drinking the water in here uh, and those are like the night quarters, the stables uh, or something like that with those crates because uh, the kangaroos have a lot of strength so uh, glass and their their feet is not a nice, not a like a nice their feet just shouldn't meet the glass, this is what I wanted to say. Uh, here uh, is like uh, this overhang where they can chill and here the keepers are entering the habitat. Uh, so yeah, this is how it looks, a little backstage stuff and so on. Uh, we still didn't have those really lovely backstage props from the conservation pack and uh, you will see when they were introduced how better all the backstage like stuff and backstage areas look uh, so yeah this will come in a second but here we have a building that I really enjoy this is the desert house I've built this after the Africa pack was uh, introduced to the game here we have our little eco friendly uh, playground for the kids this is done uh, with only the wood zero plastic used in here uh, so yeah we have the, our desert house in here uh, and here are the mm, in outdoor parts of some of the enclosures uh, so here we have the fennec foxes living in here maybe we'll be able to spot one uh, I don't know let's unpost oh here is one slipping uh, in this like really nice ruins fin things that I've built for them uh, so uh, yeah we saw a uh Fennec Fox uh, in here and here we have the meerkats as you guys can see here is a little one and our bunch of uh, meerkats with uh, they have a lot of those uh, logs that they can go through and they even have the logs they can go mm, used to go inside of this house which is a really nice detail uh, and yeah this is the meerkat habitat uh, as you guys can see right now we can enter this the desert house by the way by the end of this video I will also do a quick tour uh, like from the bar bar bird's eye, bird's view, uh, so from the above so you guys can see how it all looks from uh, the above. Uh, so if you feel lost right now during this tour, I'll explain everything later. Uh, so here we have like this cactus garden or something like that with those information. Uh, you have to imagine that those are the names of the cactus that are growing in this desert house uh, with some backgrounds. I was really crazy about those uh, blood, about those uh, blood, how they are called the billboards when they were introduced. So I was just you know <laughs> uploading and they're everywhere. Uh, here we have like a uh, implied gerboa a uh, little like tongue or terrarium uh, oh oh 
what is this? <laughs> so yeah, you'll see a lot of those mistakes. This is a tree. Uh, as I told you guys, this zoo is not finished. So please don't mind those things. Uh, so yeah, here we have a little, uh, maybe not so little, but the enclosure that I really like. Uh, this is the Gemsbok enclosure. Uh, so as you guys can see, here are our Gemsboks. Let's unpause the game for a second. Uh, they have this really nice enclosure with those like inclines and those like things that hold the ground for like just sliding down uh, we can go in here to see the rest of the enclosure because from uh, this inside part of the building the guests can also see it through those windows and uh, on the other side uh, we have the indoor part of the meerkat enclosure so they can enter through here from those uh, logs they can enter here uh, they have this like little cave for them to sleep and yeah this is how it looks i also really like the idea for this uh, like shelter for the games book i think it looks really nice uh, and yeah, this is the indoor part for the Fennec Foxes. I also used this like ruin themed a bit, like this Egyptian, I don't know, something. Uh, they have this heat lamp in here. Uh, yeah, really like this enclosure. I've built it so, so long ago, but I still like it. In here we have a little sneak peek inside of the, uh, of the games box stables. Uh, so we have a little one in here, sleeping. And we can actually go inside here. And uh, this is the staff room or a keeper's hut, I think. And here we can enter uh, the Gemsbok uh, stables. Uh, so we have those like clothes, the, the things that can be closed, those like stalls. And in here, uh, we also have like a holding area for them uh, in case they need to be separated or something. Okay, so let's go out of this house this is all that probably i should tell you about i really like the details of those sandy uh columns and so on uh, here are some more information about the desert because this is a desert house uh, and so on i will probably have to also uh, upload uh, what is here oh <laughs> you shouldn't see that <laughs> i don't remember my builds like come on i've built it so so long ago ago i also will uh, what i wanted to say is that i will also upload a, 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 a link to the google like drive where you can uh, download the billboards for this zoo so it is complete when you will download it with all the billboards information and so on and this is the thing, the first of the things that you didn't see in the last tour. Uh, this is something that I've built, I think, after the, the last tour that we had one year ago. And this is the aviary for the uh, Indian peafowls. So I really like this, like, design of it, like those little houses almost. Uh, and yeah, the guests can, can come here and see uh, our peafowls. They have a lot of those things to sit on, uh, like in here or in here. Unfortunately, they cannot use that in the game, but uh, this is something that I saw in uh, in a lot of, you know, peafowl enclosures out there in zoos. Um, so yeah, we have some information on the peafowls. Uh, and in here we can go to see inside of this building. Uh, so we have the backstage area uh, in here. Uh, so here we have a little kitchen to prepare the food for the peafowls. Uh, a fancy roof window. This is really fancy for a peafowl <laughs> like backstage, but don't mind it. And here we have like an indoor part for them. Uh, so we have two hands in here, as you can see. We I used it as a feeder. And here we have those like those coops. I think that they are called. They can lay their eggs in here. So uh, also a really nice detail. They can actually go uh, up there uh, and they can, no, they cannot sit in here, but this is what I envisioned. And also another fancy uh, like skylight in here. Uh, so yeah, this is the peafowl uh, enclosure and the backstage. Mm, okay, let's go back because we have like this little bird area in here, but also this bird area also is a beginning of our wetlands area. The, one of my favorite areas in the zoo, I must say. So in here, we have a little uh, view inside of our flamingo habitat. 
so a really nice view as you guys can see we see those flamingos uh, swimming uh, we see them I don't know just roaming around their enclosure uh, I really really like this like vista point in here uh, so this is something that I've built quite recently uh, we use those uh, like rock walls and so on so the guest can stand here it can look inside of this habitat uh, here is also a nice view inside of it. Uh, so yeah, this is the flamingos. The flamingos also have, we can take a look inside of the little shelter for them. They have the water section also in the shelter. And in here, and there's a little uh, like backstage area. Uh, and also this building looks like this from the other side. Uh, so... Also, those parts are not finished at all. I will do it all. I decided that I would do those things that you cannot really see. Like at the very end that when the zoo will be finished because of the piece count. Just simply. I don't want to, you know, slow down my computer. I don't want to not be able to build in here uh, because of those. So I'll do it at the end. Okay, so... Uh, this is the habitat that I really like and you guys also loved it as well. It got so many views here on YouTube. Uh, so uh, this was my first uh, early access, I think. And this is what I was able to do during the early access time. Uh, so this is the crane aviary. So we have this like a little building, a wooden building. We can go inside here. And here you have this lovely view inside of the crane aviary. So... I must say that I really like it. I really like to. Uh, I really enjoyed building it because I had this really nice idea for it for the uh, like rock wall and those elevated like water sections. And so the guests can sit here, of course, can have a look at the cranes. Uh, we have some little ones in here. Uh, the cranes are are also able to go up there. So this is really nice, and we can we can actually and pause the game for a second. Okay, what are you doing? <laughs> Will you do something for us? No. Okay, let's go inside. Let's not waste any time because this tour will probably be very, very long one. Uh, okay, so this is the inside part for the cranes. As you can see, one of them is sleeping. Uh, we have like this drained pool for them in here. We have uh, like those also those poles to sleep on. We have some poo as well and here's a keeper part uh, with some food and so on and here is the little like separating area that they can be separated in simply and here is the oh no i knew that this will happen eventually uh, so we need to quickly reset ourselves uh, because i got stuck somewhere uh, okay we are good uh, so this is the front of the crane building so let's go back and let's see other parts of our zoo. So let's go through the window <laughs> quickly. Uh, and yeah, here is one of my favorite, favorite creations in this zoo. The wetlands house. Uh, it took so, so long to build. Uh, but okay, something was... Yeah, this tour is going really nice, as you guys can see. Uh, I need to change my lights, uh, because I am very particular about my light in this game. But yeah, this is the wetlands house with this really, really nice facade, wooden facade. I really like this detail of those like curved walls in here. Uh, this was inspired by one of the swimming pools in Switzerland, I think. Uh, but yeah, we have a little wetlands house uh, like sign. We have a capybara statue in here, uh, because... Spoiler alert, there are capybaras living in here. <laughs> uh, so we, we can go firstly here uh, to see the outside part of the otter habitat because we have the Asian small clothed otter living in here. One of my favorite animals of the game. Uh, so here we have those signs made by lion, if I am correct. Uh, we have some benches for the guests and we have the underwater viewing uh, for, the, uh, for the otters. Here are those. Here's a little baby. Uh, and the guests are able to see both underwater and above the water. I really like this when the zoos do this. So I also try to mimic that in several places. We have the otter in here. We can actually unpause the game for a second to see it swimming. Maybe it will dive for us. Please dive. No, they are just... They are just enjoying that swim. Uh, 
so yeah, here we have like a viewing for the gas, a little elevated one. We have this this like waterfall in here. Uh, we have a lot of foliage. I really like this habitat, I must say. It's really like cozy and uh, really like looks like a river bank or something like that. Now here we have some of the uh, of the informations uh, information boards. Those were made by my very good buddy uh, Rare Beast, who used to make them for me. Uh, he is a uh, he is a graphic designer, uh, but unfortunately he doesn't have time for to do them for me anymore. Uh, so uh, when he stopped, I also stopped uploading them to the zoo. <laughs> uh, so if by any means you are, for example, a graphic designer and you have some spare time and would like to do those for me that would be amazing i will of course feature you here on the channel and of course do all the shoutouts and so on but maybe some of you just have so those skills and would like to make those for me that would be amazing because i don't have those skills at all we have the restaurant in here as well uh, so this is the wetlands dining the guests can see it in here this restaurant was added in the uh, in the euro pack i think so uh, the guests are actually teleported from here to here and it looks really cool when there are guests in the zoo as you can see because of the fps i don't have any guests right now uh, but yeah let's enter the wetlands house and in the uh, in the very like middle we have the platypus uh, enclosure my one of my favorites and also i had so many nice comments on this one you guys just loved it and so the whole story about this uh, house is that the zoo was able to achieve or to get the platypus and it is the only european zoos that has a platypus uh, so that's why this whole building was built because we had those wealthy investors uh, because they knew that the platypus would be a really oh here we have it a really huge uh like attraction and a lot of people will come here so here we have the platypus let's unpause the game so it will swim for us a bit where are you here okay it is enjoying the water section really nice and uh, here of course it has a little land section uh, so it can uh, go outside uh, Here we have the inside part for the otters. Uh, so they have this like uh, This like elevated thing to go out uh, of their enclosure and Here they they have their indoor water section in the winter. They will probably be held in here. So uh, Yeah, this is how it looks we can go up there to see the and uh, the land side of the uh, platypus enclosure. I think that I hope that the things that I am telling you guys are interesting to you. <laughs> I hope this won't be too boring. Uh, but yeah, I really, really, really wanted to see this tour, so we are doing it right now. I am trying to be as uh, entertaining as I can be. Uh, so here we have the wetlands dining. Uh, the wetlands dining has this like really cool, cool detail of this planter on the wall. Uh, I really like this. Of course, this is how the uh, the um, restaurants in this game work so i had to incorporate something like that but it goes into the black void uh, but uh, this is meant to be used outside so the guests should be enjoying the food in here uh, and in here we have another habitat that is in this house this is the habitat for the capybaras and the tapirs unfortunately they are not here but uh, this is with the place where they we will be holding it will be held uh, during the winter time uh, so yeah really kept in the similar style as the otters uh, but here we have obviously a lot more space it is bigger uh, and yeah i really like this like wall detail and so on uh, and yeah here we have some uh, information about the capybaras and the uh, the tapirs as you guys can see also made by rare beast uh, here we have the toilets and if we'll go through the toilets real quick uh, yes i was right uh, so here we have like an indoor part for all of those animals living in the wetlands house so here's the capybara and the tapir indoor area those were on the left side are meant for the uh, capybaras and they are actually using it that way so it is really nice we have the capybara slipping in here uh, and on the other side we have the area for the baits bird stay here as you guys can see this guy is sleeping here as well they have those planters no those, those are the feeders oh my god just oh my god so much talking in this video uh i hope you don't mind if i will take a sip of water from time to time 
Okay, let's go uh, because we are already almost like we are already over 20 minutes and we haven't even seen the half of the zoo. Uh, so here's the indoor part for the platypus. So the platypus has this little uh, indoor like swimming pool in here. Uh, and some hay beddings to sleep on and uh, here's the entrance to the platypus uh, habitat and if you go there uh, there is an indoor part for the otters one is sleeping in here they also have this little pool in there and the separation uh, area if one of them needs to be separated or something and some things for the keepers remember when we still didn't have those things and we had to do use the blueprints or so on like <laughs> I need to change that. I need to change this in the future. Uh, but yeah, here we also have the outdoor parts of this house. So this is how it looks from the other side. The keepers basically go through there. I will also have to change that in the future. But as you guys could, uh, as I told you guys, I will do all of those things later. Oh. And now we are in the platypus <laughs> habitat. Uh, but when we'll be finished with all the habitats and so on, I will just, you know, do those finishing touches to the zoo. And yeah. So we are going past the cranes and we are going uh, to see the uh, outdoor habitat for the capybaras. And here are the babies, as you guys can see. Let's then pause for a second uh, so we can see them moving. Uh, they are eating the watermelon. Uh, so yeah, this is the capybara habitat and the tapir habitat from this side. And they have this really nice huge water section. There's another small one swimming. Uh, with those planters in here uh, and yeah here we have a tapir at least one of them and here we have this like shaded structure uh, to observe them when for example it's raining uh, and here's our tapir as well they also have those like hot springs or something those, those things that they are using those quite a lot so this is nice to see oh oh what is it? What is it? <laughs> uh, yeah, as I told you guys, this zoo is not finished by any, any means. So yeah, here we have a little tapir statue. And here we have an area that I really love. Uh, I just thought that uh, let's do like a natural, I don't know, uh, water section in a zoo, like uh, a body of water that was here before the zoo was built. Uh, so a little like pond or a little lake uh, is really overgrown by foliage and they incorporated some of the habitats into it so we have uh, in here the habitat for the uh, for the wild water buffalo uh, so here are our buffaloes as you guys can see they have this really nice stable in here uh, one of them is going into the water so yeah really nice really love this habitats and those two that are in here i incorporated those mud baths in here and in yeah, uh, on the other side in here, using the same shelter, we have the uh, Nile Lechway, one of my favorite ha animals in this game, like hands down, I love those guys so much. Uh, so here we have the male and the females, and they also have this large water section in here. And here is basically the end of this lake. I wanted to use those willow trees in here to make it look a bit more like wetlands something. We also have some information on the Nile Lechway and so on. Um, but yeah, let's go quickly uh, to see how to do it. Maybe let's just... Oh, I am not allowed to go there, but <laughs> yeah, we will go quickly over our beautiful plants in here uh, and inside of the habitat because I really wanted to show you guys the uh, indoor parts of this habitat. So here's a little holding pen. As you can see, uh, we have those nine ledgeways in here. Uh, so the keepers enter in here. Uh, and here's uh, night quarters and stables for the um, for the buffaloes. So we have you have those like separated stalls in here, uh, and in here is the area for the Nile ledgeways. Uh, really nice. I like it. I like it. Maybe not uh, like as detailed as I am doing them right now, but still really really nice. And here's also like a holding pen. Uh, for the water buffaloes uh, so yeah they are uh, able to enter here let's go and try to maybe use a, again the plants to go out uh, and let's continue this way to one of my favorite builds in this zoo 
uh, the build that I actually created to celebrate the 10,000 subscribers on the channel. The giraffe house. Uh, so as you guys know, in my logo, there is a giraffe. I really love giraffes. I have a, f I don't know, thing for the giraffes. So uh, I really wanted to make a special habitat. And I think that I was able to achieve that. I really love this view from here. As you, can, as you guys can see, one of the giraffes in, in here. Uh, so we go to this elevated part where we, where we can have uh, the best view inside of this huge habitat for the giraffes and uh, there are also the Nyalas living in here and the Thompson's gazelles. Uh, so if you unpause the game, you can see those guys moving. So this house is, and this habitat is a bit inspired by the Basel Zoo. Uh, this house is really heavily inspired by it, actually. Uh, so here is the habitat, a little more dry, not too many like plants. Uh, I love those guys so much. Uh, my like huge wish for Planet Zoo is that they will eventually give us more of the giraffes uh, because there are more giraffe species than only one. Uh, and uh, the reticulated giraffe is one of the prettiest ones when it comes to the pattern. But there are, for example, also uh, the Maasai giraffe that is really beautiful. So we have this like uh, view to this habitat on the sides uh, as well. Uh, we can go around it actually. Uh, here's this mode for the animals so they are not able to jump out of here and yeah the guests can get really nice views inside of their, their inside of it as you guys can see this is one of my newest builds so uh, the amounts of detail and uh, just uh, general appearance is just so much better okay so let's continue this way Oh my god, I need to talk less. <laughs> I need to make it shorter. Uh, so here we have the entrance to the giraffe house. Uh, I want to keep it in this like a bit classical style. Uh, so here we have um, again some of the info signs by uh, Lion. Here we have the keeper hat, I think. Yeah. Uh, and here is the indoor part for all of those animals. We have those stalls and those really nice like details. I love those in here. Uh, and also the toilets for the guests and also uh, some, I think that this is the uh, staff room. Uh, so yeah, here we have, this is the Nyala sleeping in here. One side is meant for the Nyalas, uh, here, this one, this one, and this one. Uh, this is meant for the giraffes. But um, we cannot do that in the game, so we have the Thompson Gazelle sleeping in here. And this is the side for the Thompson's Gazelle in here. Um, but yeah, I really love this building. I really like the vibes of it. And one of my favorite creations in Planet Zoo, uh, for sure. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, let's go out. Uh, let's continue uh, that way to see the other side of, the, uh, of this building. Here we have the uh, the entrance for the keepers, uh, and yeah, we have a giraffe's drinking here, so really cool. But we actually have this like little uh, viewing area here, uh, so we can get this really nice, beautiful view inside of this habitat. I must say that I really love it. Here's this like elevated uh, part for the guests to see the entire habitat, and yeah, this is how it looks. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, this, we are now in our like African section of the zoo. Uh, it is not min mi finished by any means. There will be enclosures everywhere here, but uh, I didn't have time and still to do them. But here we are approaching one of my favorite builds uh, here. So this is the bat house that we created during the early access uh, for the Twilight Park. So it was created very recently. Uh, so here we have this outdoor aviary for the bats. Let's unpause the game for a second to see, to, so you guys can see them flying. Uh, so yeah, uh, really nice. I really love it. Uh, I was so like happy that the flying animals were are finally added to the game. So I wanted to create something nice for them. So I came up with this house. Uh, they have this like outdoor uh, aviary in here. Uh, but also they have the indoor aviary. So uh, here is the entrance to the bath house, uh, and the indoor is not the aviary; it's a cave. Uh, so uh, here's a cave. Uh, we can, for a second, change the time to the night, so you can see how it looks. It looks so much better this way. Uh, 
Uh, and the guests are actually able to enter the aviary. Uh, so here we have uh, some information about the bats. And here is the cave that the guests are able to enter. Let's unpause the game so we can see those guys flying uh, around this habitat. Oh, here's one drinking. Really cool. Uh, so yeah, this is the uh, the indoor part for the bats. They are able to fly out to the to this part. And here, here's actually a little backstage area for the uh, bats. As you guys can see, we have the. Uh, finally, the, all the backstage stuff introduced uh, with the uh, conservation pack. And here are the small cages for the bats if they're injured or something, I don't know, need to be separated. We can call them in here. Okay, so let's go through this. And yeah, some more like theming and stuff. What is that? Oh my god, I didn't see that earlier. What is this? <laughs> this is a slight mistake and I actually uploaded it like that to the workshop. Oh my god. I cannot believe that uh, because here we have the exits and Oh my god, come on Caesar. You cannot do such things <laughs> Some more information about the bats. Uh, we have uh, more of those signs by uh, by lion I really love them and here. I wanted to make like a starry night or something uh, so here we have some plants also and those like are supposed to be those lights that help the plants to grow without uh, the sun. So let's change the time to the daytime again and let's go out. Uh, so here's the rest of the building and this is the end of the path so we cannot go in there. Uh, we will actually go back. Uh, I just uh, before recording this I just quickly did like a uh, uh, little rehearsal of the streams to know where I should go uh, so it all makes sense uh, so yeah I prepared myself a bit this time uh, like uh, okay so let's go here like quickly as I told you guys this will all be our African uh, area in here so we'll have enclosures for uh, zebras antelopes uh, probably hyenas and stuff like that uh, but here, here is an uh, enclosure that I really love. And again, don't mind this. <laughs> uh, as I told you guys, I have this like special story about the uh, the Scimitar Oryx. They are really close into to my heart. The story, of course, includes my grandfather and my childhood and so on. So if you like to hear this story, I won't say it to you now, but if you like to... Uh, hear that go to this episode and see that but i love this habitat so much i love this detail in here i love the modes what we were able to to achieve uh this shelter took so so much time to build but i must say that uh, i really really love it uh, and my favorite animals in here uh, the scimitar horn oryx uh yeah really really cool enclosure i actually love the view from here uh, the most, I think, so we can see this, uh, yeah, this uh, uh, habitat, no, the habitat, the building through this, uh, through those uh, trees. It looks so, so nice. I just love it. I, I am so, so glad that uh, I was in the Berlin Zoo and that this inspired me because I think that this is just phenomenal and I am so modest again. <laughs> so here we have one of our like uh, really old builds. This is the elephant and rhino house and here's the outdoor part for the elephants. They have this like little swimming pool in here with the glass uh, like uh, detail so the guests can see them you know swimming and so on uh, and this is how the habitat the outer part looks it also has a moat uh, and yeah you can see the elephants uh, out there this was my take on the uh, fake trees or dead trees before uh, so yeah let's go in here uh, in here we can actually in go inside of the shelter for the uh, for the oryx uh, so yeah, this was right after the uh, the, con the conservation pack was out, so I was using a lot of those things. Uh, here we have like a little holding pen for uh, our Oryx, and uh, in here we have the stalls. 
Uh, so uh, comparing to the previous like holding areas that you guys could see like previous shelters, this is definitely on the higher level, I will say. Uh, we have a lot of those things like those crates, uh, some food for the animals, some like preparation stations, uh, the buckets, the hoses, all of those things. And we have like those stalls for them to sleep in. Okay, so this is this was the shelter. And let's go in here to see one of the um, newest builds. This is all in here. The and uh, elephant uh, habitats, they can be separated in here, but this is open so they can go in here and, and enjoy this part of the of their shelter, of their habitat, sorry. Uh, but yeah, this is one of the newest builds. This is the build for the main wolf and the uh, giant anteater. Uh, this one, this buff won't be here. The guests won't be able to go there. I just needed to co connect it for the keepers. I, I would do something completely different in here. Uh, but yeah, this is the holding pens for those guys. Uh, this is the shelter. So maybe let's see the shelter first. Uh, we can go inside here. Uh, I actually didn't do this part. I forgot about it. So sorry guys, uh, but here we have uh, those uh, like sleeping areas. Uh, we have uh, one for the uh, one for the main tools and one for the uh, for the giant anteaters. Uh, so let's go out. Okay, uh, let's go out in here and let's see the actual habitat. Okay, so uh, I must say that I really love those glass panels and this like entire thing in here. Uh, yeah, we can see our giant giant anteater in here. Uh, probably somewhere here are also the main wolves. Yes, here's one. Uh, and yeah, really, I love this creation. I must say, uh, one of my favorites. One of my favorites. I was really like. Uh, I didn't think about like mixing those guys together, but I think it really works. A lot of you guys were actually uh, very like uh, surprised that we can mix them, but yeah, the main wolf just won't harm uh, the, the giant anteater. Uh, so we can follow this buff. Uh, this is the thing that I am living uh, for the very end of this tour. <laughs> so uh, if you are waiting to see the, uh, the wildcat house, you have to wait a bit. And you have to be patient. So uh, this is the other part, the other side of the habitat for the main wolves and for the giant anteaters. Uh, so the guests can go here and have this really nice view inside of this habitat. They have this little water section here. Uh, this is the building. We can actually adjust the light a little bit uh, so we can see that better. And we have our main wolves in here. And this is basically uh, the part that will be connecting. But we have to add some habitats or stuff in here as well. Okay, uh, let's go. Let me take a... Whoa, what happened here? Let me take a sip of water really quickly uh, because... Oh my god, yeah. Talking so much is not good for my throat. What we are doing right now? Oh my god. Okay, so... Uh, let's go and see uh, the inside part of this little, of this, not little, of this huge, enormous building. Uh, because it is really, really huge. Uh, I must say that I really liked in, like, creating it back in the days, but right now I can see how not so detailed it is. I will probably cover it with a lot of foliage and it will look so much better. Uh, but yeah, here the guests can enter uh, the house. Uh, so, we have one side for the uh, elephants, and that is in here, so uh, this was a bit inspired by the Copenhagen Zoo. Uh, actually, when I was in Copenhagen last time, I just completely missed this house. I didn't go inside of it, and I'm so, so, like, mad at myself. I need to go to the zoo again. So, we have uh, elephants in here, as you guys can see. Uh, we can actually go down there quickly to see the uh, the backstage areas for them. Uh, so this, those are the stalls that they are sleeping in uh, with some hay and so on. The keepers use this door uh, to go inside of those. Uh, and uh, they have this like keeper 
things <laughs> in here. Uh, there's the uh, also the keeper hut incorporated in here. Uh, some of the other sleeping areas for the elephants. So yeah, and uh, this is the elephant side of the building. On and on the other side we have uh, the rhinos. Uh, so the rhinos. What is? What is that? Why there is this lump in here? <laughs> oh my god, what happened in here? I have to delete that. Uh, but yeah, here's our part for the rhinos. The rhinos are probably outside. Uh, but yeah, some information about the rhinos. And we also have uh, we have this mud bath for them. Uh, everything is secured so they don't harm their horns. Oh, here's one rhino. I thought it was a rock, <laughs> but yeah, he's sleeping in here. And here we have some backstage stuff for the rhinos, or so some stalls for them. Uh, okay, why this tire is inside of the wall? I don't know. Uh, probably they were playing with it and this happened. Uh, but yeah, here is... Oh, here's actually one rhino sleeping in, the, uh, in here, so really nice to see. And also a keeper area in here uh, for those guys, probably in here. Yeah, we have the uh, other staff buildings and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, let's go out. This was the, I really love this roof. I, I, I must say, even though uh, this is one of my like older builds, uh, some of the like details in here I really, really like. Okay, let's go out. Uh, let's go through all of these fin unfinished parts uh, to see uh, the rhino habitat. Oh my god, those distances <laughs> in here, I just... Those, go those guests have to walk a lot in the zoo, I must say. Uh, so here we have a holding area for the rhinos uh, in here, so in case uh, any of them needs to be separated, they can close them in here. Let's go out and uh, on the path and uh, yeah here's the outside part for the rhinos with those elevated planters so that they don't eat the all the uh, all the foliage just that is in here. here here we have one rhino enjoying the water section this is actually lined as you guys can see i don't do that stuff a lot right now um so yeah, we have also this really nice thing. We didn't have the hinge pieces back then, so I had to go like come up with my own like bolts of screws. So they're a bit large, but still a nice idea. Uh, so here we have, I think that this was the last thing uh, that I created before the last tour. So in, during the last tour, you guys could also see that. Uh, this is the California sea lion habitat and the one that I really like, I must say. Uh, this was a bit inspired by the sea lion habitats in the uh, Central Park Zoo in New York and some other, I don't really remember that, but uh, yeah, this is the, um, the shelter for them, so we can see that in the distance, they are using this water section a lot, which I really like, uh, so we can go uh, like round it to see more of those habitats, here's the land section for them. Definitely not up to the standards uh, of, for example, my habitats for the California sea lions in the Valby City Zoo. But yeah, I was still learning back then. Here we have the uh, this like part for the educators and the guests, so they can come here and uh, hear some really interesting facts about the, uh, our California sea lions. And here we have the toilet for our guests. So. We'll go inside of the building later, I mean the building for the sea lions, because uh, I have some path in for this thing in other parts of the zoo. But yeah, here's a penguin house. I think that, I don't know, during some of the updates, uh, something must have changed, because I have a lot of those things, and I was, I'm like certain that I was always being careful with my terrain, so that things doesn't don't don't show but yeah i have to clean all of that in the future i must say but yeah here we have our penguin house it's uh, it houses two uh, species of penguins that we have in the game so here is the african penguin uh, the entire idea for this uh, why there is one box uh, i have no idea but the entire idea for uh, this habitat was that uh, the penguins 
Come on, what's going on? Okay. Uh, the penguins uh, will be able to dive and go from this side to this side. Uh, so they do just that. It works super well. Uh, the keepers can get access to both of those parts. Uh, actually, we have uh, uh, backstage stuff for this somewhere here, I think. Oh no, I didn't do the backstage. <laughs> I forgot about it. Yeah, I completely didn't do the backstage because it was tough to make. Uh, but yeah, sorry for that. Uh, we have those penguins. The only problem with that, with that is that the chicks of the penguins, they cannot swim. So if they are born on this side of the habitat, they need to stay here until they, they will mature, both for this part and this part. But uh, I really like this idea. Uh, maybe we'll actually go and see the indoor, like the underwater section a bit. Uh, I don't know if the game will allow us, probably not. Okay, so let's keep that. Uh, but yeah, this is my idea for okay uh, for the uh, African penguins. And here we have, this was, I, I think, the second habitat that we've built on the channel. And this is the area for the king penguins. I started my YouTube channel when the aquatic pack was released. So, of course, I've built for the uh, aquatic animals first. Uh, so we have this like penguin area uh, with the uh, underwater viewing gallery uh, So uh, also we have those like uh, Windows to for them to, to so the guests can see them on both sides uh, with those small little things uh, At some point they actually improved the uh, Traversable area of the penguins. So right now they can go inside of those small things because there was a time I think that they couldn't uh, because I couldn't make it work in this habitat, but it was improved uh, and Also, we can s quickly see a little like uh, indoor part for the penguins uh, Yeah this path don't look at that uh, but yeah uh, here they also can sleep in this little cave we have uh, like a freezer and stuff like this and this this is my first habitat ever on youtube uh, so <laughs> Uh, and this is the habitat that i like the least i must say this is the habitat for the gray seals uh, it was inspired by Berlin Zoo again. Uh, we have this like, uh, uh, I don't know, this is the rock formation in here. And we have the water section for them to enjoy. This is the only habitat that I think that I will rebuild completely, uh, but I will do it later. Uh, so it's really boring, nothing special. Uh, and yeah, I was still learning back then. Uh, and, and when it comes to other, ha oh, there's actually a seal swimming. When it comes to other uh, older habitats, I won't rebuild them, but I made a decision that I will add some of the newer foliage uh, to uh, those. So uh, this will be a quick fix, I think. And yeah, we'll do it eventually. So now we are back at our main plaza again. Uh, here is also a restaurant that we didn't see. So this is a, like a food court. The guests they can take the, the plate in here. Uh, they can take the food, whatever they want. Uh, There's a buffet in here and they pay uh, on this counter in here. So this was my idea. And also we have uh, the toilet and there is also a kitchen in here, as you guys can see. Uh, this was a blueprint, so it wasn't made by me, but so if you look for a kitchen on the workshop, uh, you should be able to find it. Okay, I think that I need to do a quick break uh, right now, so I will be back. Of course, you won't see that. I'll be back in a second. And I am back. Of course, you didn't see any difference, but yeah, I'm back. Uh, so we are now entering the older part of our zoo. The, those are the habitats that I uh, created at the very begin beginning of the zoo. Uh, so we have here the backstage stuff for uh, the, our seals. Uh, so if you go here, uh, here are the seals. Oh, they are all sleeping in here. We have a little baby. They have this like little indoor pool, uh, and yeah, some stuff for uh, the keepers and stuff like that. In here, we actually have a filter room with this like. Hmm, I need to change that because someone can hurt their hat. Uh, but yeah, here we have a filter room 
uh, for uh, the filters. Uh, I don't know why I did it. Maybe I'll just delete that because it's completely unnecessary. Uh, so here we have the zoo management building, as you guys can see. So here we have this uh, like older brick building. If you go inside, we have a lot of those uh, in-game uh, build like stuff buildings. Uh, but we also have some custom stuff like some decorations. Uh, some uh, this is a uh, kitchen for our uh, stuff, so they can prepare their meals in here. And upstairs. Uh, we have uh, the office of our uh, zoo director, who, so he he works in here. Uh, here's a little like, conference table. Uh, Teamworks makes the dream work, as you can see. <laughs> and here is some other, I don't know, accountants and so on working in here. Uh, so if you will go out here, we have a little parking lot for uh, the staff. Uh, and we actually have, maybe we'll go here first. Uh, this is the backstage stuff for the habitat that we'll see shortly. Uh, this is the llama habitat. So here we have the holding area and uh, here is the indoor part of the uh, llama uh, habitat, like uh, uh, stalls and the stables for the llamas, as you guys can see. Uh, they are actually using it. I love the llamas. I need to build something new for them, those because I am missing them. I haven't played with them so, so long. Uh, so yeah, let's go back through here and let's see the llama habitat from uh, this site. I also need to remember to add more of those sides, uh, signs in the zoo because I stopped doing them at some point. Uh, so yeah, here is a, a small llama enclosure uh, with this really cool building in the back. Uh, so yeah, one of the first habitats built in the zoo. Why there's trash in here? There's no people there. That's weird. Uh, okay, uh, and let's see also in here uh, the reindeers. Uh, here we have the reindeer habitat. Uh, so we have... Oh, we actually have an albino one, as you guys can see. Uh, so here's a little reindeer habitat. Uh, nothing too crazy. Like, I was really inspired by all of those uh, reindeer and of their ungulate habitats, they are often really, really plain. We'll see that part of the zoo later. Uh, here's a toilet for the guests, uh, with also some backstage, if I remember it correctly, yeah. Uh, so, we have a little backstage for the stuff in here. And if you'll we'll continue that way uh, and take this path, uh, we can actually uh, go and see the backstage stuff for uh, the reindeers. Uh, so here's the reindeer uh, like habitats in here. Uh, the reindeers can sleep in here. There's, uh, oh, here's an albino baby, how cool. Uh, so here we have like two sides of this building for them to sleep in. And here's a little holding area for uh, the reindeers in case they need to be separated. And on the other side, we have uh, the backstage for the animals that you'll see soon. Uh, so really large <laughs> storage in here. Uh, but on this uh, uh, part, we have the pronghorn antelopes, uh, as you guys can he see in here. Uh, and the other part is here. And also on the other side, we have the uh, Bactrian camels with some holding area in here and some stalls for them to sleep in. Uh, we'll see the camels in a second, uh, but firstly let's go in here because we have some other uh, very uh, exciting animal in here. This is the Bobby Russo, and I really like this habitat. This is also one of my uh, first creations here on the channel, but I think that it is a really nice one. Uh, so we have the mud bath for them, we have a little water section, and we have uh, this like forage box hidden in here. Uh, I also used to do those things like uh, our babirusas, but uh, you know, following that, all the children, all, all those stuff, this would be just impossible to do. So let's take this little gate in here because we can go here inside of the babirusa shelter. Uh, so it's in here, and we have those small like uh, sleeping areas for them. 
we have a little baby that is really dirty <laughs> and also in here uh, we have oh this is our mail uh, in here we have like also a holding area for those guys and what is this this is really weird <laughs> yeah you see those stuff that's come on what is it oh this is probably the box uh, so they used to play with it and something happens Okay, so I don't have any influence on that. Uh, also, we have this like fence, the parameter fence of the entire zoo, and I need to complete uh, like complete it. I need to do this all. Uh, so the zoo is actually closed down, and you know the uh, some intruders cannot enter it without the tickets. So we need to uh, play attention to that. Here we have the pronghorn antelope enclosure. I don't know why I decided to like give it a name in here i didn't do it for any other uh, like habitats and enclosures but yeah here we have the pronghorn antelopes another like really more like plain enclosure like the typical and ungulate one with a little viewing area in here we have the male as you guys can see we have a little like uh, shaded uh, area in here and yeah they are uh, having their living their best lives uh, in there and here what I also wanted to show you is of course I want to show you the entire zoo so we will see that of course as well this is the insect house so uh, it uh, houses all of the insects that we have in the game uh, so let's go and see it uh, on one of the sides we have the spiders uh, we have the scorpions in the in the middle in here so here, here's a huge planters in here Here's one of the scorpions, uh, and here's another one, the desert one. Uh, so I had this idea of those like little windows uh, where you can have a look inside of those enclosures. Here we have the insects, and here we have like an implied uh, ant eat uh, ant eaters. <laughs> those are the ants, not the ant eaters. Uh, like the ant ants uh, in here. Uh, it will be actually so cool if they introduce the ants to the game, uh, but of course we don't have them. So we have some information on the uh, insects in here and we have uh, those insect enclosures uh, with those little small windows and I think it looks really cool. Uh, you can like look at it uh, in uh, maybe, in, you know, this is just a big enclosure with several windows, but maybe those are separate enclosures. So uh, a lot of different ways that you can uh, see that. Here's the Malayan leaf insects. Unfortunately, those guys are so small that we cannot see them. And here we have uh, some of the beetles. And on the other side, uh, there is, of course, uh, the spiders. Uh, so we have uh, some of the spiders that are available in the game uh, in here. And also some information about the spiders on those billboards. And if you'll go in here, we also have a little backstage area for, uh, oh my God, what happened? What happened? I think I took, took a long, wrong turn because this should absolutely work. Uh, okay, there was another step, but yeah, I didn't finish it. Maybe I should do it, uh, but yeah, in case you wondered, there is also a backstage stuff. And of course I got teleported to the roof, so uh, let's go out of the building because this is what I wanted to uh, to do. And also, you asked if the butterflies will be housed in here. And I actually plan to uh, do the butterfly house in here next to this one. Uh, so yeah, we'll have the butterflies also in the Elm Hill City Zoo and we'll build it quite soon. Uh, so let's now take this path to see our little like... Uh, this is the beginning of this like temperate tundra section and uh, there are some of the European and also North American animals living here. Uh, so at first we have the black-tailed uh, prairie dogs. Uh, so those guys are living in here. Uh, they have this like really uh, prairie inspired enclosure with a lot of like those, uh, I don't know, holes and the places they can go to. Uh, and here is their uh, like shelter. They also have those little cool tunnels that they they are actually usable, so they are using them and uh, you know walking through this enclosure. We can unpause. Maybe there is some commotion going on in this little habitat for the prairie dogs. Uh, okay, uh, let's go further because we don't have too much time. 
Uh, well, let's go first in here because here you have this like viewing taras for uh, both the pronghorns and uh, that are in here and the Bakshian camels. All the camels are here, so pretty nice to see. Uh, they actually changed the uh, the size of the Bakshian camel model, so right now those guys are pretty big, pretty huge. Uh, so uh, before I had quite a lot of them because they for this huge enclosure. Uh, they seemed a little like it seems a little empty, but right now uh, it looks quite fine. Uh, okay, so here's the uh, shelter for both the prairie dogs that can enter in here, and also uh, the beavers. So we have one of the beavers uh, sleeping uh, in here. Of course, they can also be separ separated uh, in there. Uh, so if you'll go out uh, in here. We can go and see uh, one of my favorite habitats, I must say, and this is the beaver habitat. So you can see the beaver habitats from different sides. So here is, uh, oh, here's this beaver dam enrichment and one of them is actually using it. Uh, so it's so cool that we can see that. Uh, and if you go uh, this way, maybe this is the right time also to see the other side of the Bakchen camel enclosure. Uh, so yeah, this is the Bakshian camels, uh, like a deserty, uh, a lot of sands and a lot of those pine trees. This was really inspired by my local zoo. Okay, but I wanted to take, oh, actually this buff. Uh, this is very not finished, so don't look at that. Uh, and in here, uh, we can go uh, and see the beavers. So maybe let's do that first. Uh, so here's a really cool uh, viewing inside of the beaver habitat. Uh, we have this like um, building that has those like, I don't know, windows. <laughs> and uh, and uh, also underwater viewing, we can see the, one of the beavers diving. I couldn't make them dive in here when I was building it, but now they are diving a lot. So I think that they improved something. Uh, so yeah, we have this really cool viewing for this like dam in here with this like waterfall and we can see other uh, blue uh, uh, beaver going inside of the shelter. But yeah, I really love it. It was also one of the first times that I was using this uh, like wall uh, using the locks. So yeah, really, really nice enclosure. Uh, also in this building we have like an, uh, some you know, information and also an like, implied habitat for uh, a rodent because there are some only rodents living in here. We have the, uh, the beavers, some other guy living in here and also we have uh, the other side of the prairie dog habitat. Uh, so uh, those are the rock formations or the tunnels that they can enter. And also we have this like uh, a cave or something for them to enjoy and they are also using it and sleeping in here as you guys can see. Uh, so a really cool enclosure and I like it that you can see the insect house from here. I didn't actually mention it but this doesn't look as uh, complicated as it was to build. Uh, I had so much work with this like uh, classical style and so on. But yeah, it looks so, so plain, but it was a lot of work. Uh, so yeah, here we missed the uh, moose enclosure. And the moose has this like really cool enclosure uh, with uh, all those waterfalls in here. And uh, let's change the sun a bit. Uh, so the water just flows through here. And here's this large water section uh, in there. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot see the moose in here. But here they also have this like more foresty uh, section. We can actually go inside if the game will allow me. Yeah, and we can go uh, to their shelter. This all is not finished, so don't look at that. Uh, okay, what is going on in here? I had to, I know, I moved it because I couldn't click on the habitat once. And again, I knew that this will happen a lot of times. I actually considered not doing this trip uh, in uh, this explore mode, but uh, it allows me to zoom, which is really nice. Uh, so yeah, this is the sleeping quarters for the moose. Oh, here's actually one in here, the female. And uh, they have this like holding areas. Oh, the male is sleeping in here under the, uh, under the tree. So this is really nice. Uh, this is the holding area, one of them, and this is the other one that is closed. 
So if in case they need to be separated, uh, they can be closed in here. So yeah, really cool uh, enclosure. I really like it. But let's go back uh, through here, through all these waterfalls and stuff and try to go out. Yeah, we are able to go here. Uh, to see the rest of this enclosure. So here's this huge water section for them. Uh, they really enjoy the water. We actually have a little baby swimming in here. Uh, so uh, yeah, really cool. I really liked it. Uh, I really also enjoyed uh, creating it. And then it got a lot of views here on YouTube. So thank you guys for watching and enjoying that. Uh, so yeah, this is also like using a natural body of water that was here before the zoo was established and this is also not finished at all in here uh, but yeah another animal from the north america park the fox uh, the arctic fox uh, as you guys can see they have those little huts in here and uh, they have a little like waterfall just for some looks uh, so this is how it works we actually have a keeper in here and we have this like really cool shelter we'll go inside of the shelter later and they have also this area. Uh, oh, there are actually little babies in here. Uh, that is, they can be closed in here with uh, this like mesh roof and also this little cave that they can use. Uh, so yeah, this is the Arctic Fox uh, habitat that uh, also was really fun to build. Okay, and let's go back here and finish all that. But if we continue this way, we'll go to quite a newer section of the zoo. Uh, actually, we can also follow this path and we will see the inside part of the fox habitats. Uh, so those are the stalls. This one is actually drinking from here. This is interesting. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those are the night quarters for the... Uh, for the... Uh, for the... Uh, foxes, uh, I actually had to do it this way so the keepers will be able to access both of those sides so the foxes are also <laughs> able to do so but uh, yeah this is the fox enclosure uh, and if you will go here I, will, I can show you already the uh, inside part, the backstage stuff for the fallow deer so here are the animals from the Euro Park so we have the fallow deers and their night quarters and uh, no follow the ears right now in here. So let's go back. Uh, using this wonky path, I also plan to change that. I didn't want to focus on those like path, on those like backstage stuff and so on. Uh, here's the uh, the fence that I came up with. Those are all the all the pieces from the Euro Park. Euro Park is one of my favorites when it comes to the building pieces. I think it's just brilliant. Uh, this is the fence that I really like and I was this is the enclosure that I uh, created this fence for and you'll see it's used a lot uh, in the enclosures like that I was built after that uh, and you guys really 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 <laughs> enjoyed this uh, this fence and you uh, some of, of you even asked if it is an in-game fence or if it's a mod so thank you for that but no it was all created for, by me from in the individual pieces so we have the follow deer in here here uh, they have the uh, the shelter back there and yeah we have some babies in here uh, those really cool walls uh, featuring some creeping plants uh, so yeah continuing here uh, we have a little spoiler for the animal that lives next to them and this is the uh, alpine, uh, alpine ibex uh, so we can quickly see that uh, so the alpine ibex has a very rocky Enclosure. Here's a little baby, as you guys can see. Uh, I also really like this one and uh, this enclosure. Uh, so the guests can can a bit lean on this fence, but it is uh, a really nice design of the fence that uh, I got from one of the zoos that I found online. Uh, so they have this like elevated shelter that they need to climb on to reach. Uh, here's a feeder so the guests can get a really cool view inside of this uh, house. I don't know where the male is, but of course he's the most impressive out of the bunch. Uh, and uh, the uh, the here's the doll sheep, the, the doll sheep enclosure. And this is really similar. I wanted to make them similar. So they also have this like elevated shelter. 
uh, and a very rocky habitat with some information uh, and a flying doll sheep <laughs> as you guys can see let's unpause a bit yeah, okay uh, so they have a bit more like those higher uh, rock formations uh, I think that in real life they would be able to climb those unfortunately in the game they are not able to do so uh, but yeah later we'll go inside of the shelter but what we missed kind of and I wanted to show you guys so let's go back is the newest area of our zoo uh, the one that we created for the animals from the twilight pack uh, so here is the red fox enclosure, a really really nice one with those uh, viewing galleries that I really love. We have a, a small group of foxes living here, really lush habitat with this like uh, water section in the middle. As you guys can see here is a black uh, red fox uh, and here is the burrow for them that they can use. Uh, so this is one of those viewing galleries, uh, here is another one, really nice one with this tree gr growing right in the front of it, here is this water section for them, uh, so yeah this is it. And here we enter our like uh, a twilight section or uh, I don't know, temperate section. I must say that I really love this view for those two enclosures. I love those two enclosures in general. I think that they're one of my favorites in the zoo. Uh, this is the one for the raccoons. So the raccoons have this like little water section because they love the water and they actually require it in their habitat uh, with this log that they can climb on uh, and uh, a lot of uh, different uh, climbing opportunities for them with those small huts. I think it's so adorable and here we actually have have the one of our raccoons in here uh, and yeah they have the shelter in here that we will enter right now uh, so we can go in here and here's the shelter for the raccoons so they slip in here they can use those uh, uh, those climbing frames in here and on the other side we have the other animal that is living in here and this is the striped skunk we actually can see one of the skunks uh, in here uh, so let's see what it is doing. It will probably go uh, outside. Yeah, so let's see its enclosure from that side. The, uh, the keepers can actually enter the enclosures from those doors in here. And yeah, here's another viewing uh, for the red fox habitat. Unfortunately, we don't see too many foxes. Uh, here is the black one, as you guys can see. Uh, Oh, here's the red one, and they are being fed at the moment. Uh, and this is one of my favorites again. Uh, this is the uh, striped skunk habitat. Really nice. I loved playing with those stalagmite pieces and so on. And they have those little hats so they can sleep in them uh, if they want to. They have a little burrow in here. Uh, okay, I don't know why this plant is floating. This is weird. This is really, really weird. So let's fix that quickly. Uh, and yeah, here's the water section for uh, those guys to have a little drink. Uh, and yeah, here is the shelter for uh, the foxes. Uh, so as you guys can see, here we have uh, uh, different kinds of foxes because I wanted to have a lot of them. This is this crossed variant of the fox. They have those little huts uh, to sleep in. Uh, they have those uh, you know, separate areas, separate holding areas to sleep in and some food prep station and also uh, different flowing things. I don't really know what happened in here. Like, why are some of those things uh, moved slightly? I don't know. I just need to go uh, <laughs> again uh, through the zoo and check all of those things. I would definitely do it. But unfortunately, in the blueprint that is down in the description, all of those things also will be slightly moved like this thing. This is a mystery what happened in here. Okay, uh, but yeah, this is the uh, enclosure for the anniversary animals. So this is the enclosure for the rat uh, deer. Uh, so we should have them somewhere in here. Yes, we can have a really nice view for the male and two females in here. Uh, so I really want to create something like really uh, dense for them, like a forest, temperate forest. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of trees in here, a lot of also those uh, terrain ridges or ledges or something and a little water section uh, 
uh, for them to enjoy. So as you guys can see, quite a lot of deers in here. And uh, there is the shelter for the deers. All of the shelters here in this section are kept in the similar style. Uh, so uh, just, you know, we have this cohesive uh, area of the zoo. Uh, so here is the entrance to the shelter. We have some stalls in here in the, for them for, uh, to sleep. And I am stuck. Oh, yeah, I'm not stuck. Uh, but yeah, here's the like, uh, food prep and stuff like that. And here is also a holding area for them to be separated. Uh, so yeah, let's go back and let's see some other sections of our zoo. So we have to go back all of the way here. If you are still watching this video, you are just the best. Uh, I realize that this will be very long, but some of you really wanted to see all of the parts of the zoo, all of the buildings. And so that's why I am just going everywhere, showing you uh, all of the areas and talking about them and stuff like that. Uh, so here we have uh, the most popular habitat hands down on my channel in the zoo, uh, the Przewalski horse habitat and actually we can see a really cool like uh, side of the jumping horse, we can unpause it. Uh, so yeah, it did a little jump for us. Uh, so yeah, this is the Przewalski horse habitat. I really love this habitat because of the holding areas and the stables, but the whole habitat is quite nice. Uh, this is something... Uh, that's, uh, I don't know, I really started using a lot of those small rocks in here, a lot of uh, different grasses because we have those, uh, I don't know, fogged grasses added to to the to our game. So, uh, yeah, I really played with those. So, uh, from now, from this habitat, I think that my habitat has really started to improve. Uh, and yeah, here you have the stables uh, using a lot of the conservation pack pieces. Uh, I really loved creating that, I must say. Uh, so uh, here we have this like really modern stable. It was inspired by some pictures that I saw online with a lot of those conservation uh, props and stuff like that. Uh, so here we have some you know different tools and stuff. Here we have like a hay uh, storage and those stalls for the horses. And here we have those really cool like uh, I don't know smaller pens for them. Mm, so yeah. Uh, really inspired by, you know, uh, horse stables, just simply. You have some vehicles, they are off the workshop, and there's another, like, holding area in case they need to be separated. Uh, okay, so that was it when it comes to the Przewalski horse habitat. We are almost done, with guys, with the tour, so bear with me. Uh, there are only several enclosures left to see. Uh, and also we will see the wildcat house soon, so stay tuned for that. Uh, okay, uh, in here uh, we can actually use this buff. Uh, also, I need to add some signs that it is a stuff buff, because this is definitely a stuff buff. And here we have uh, the view inside of the timber wolf habitat. So this is the enclosure, this is the, uh, the shelter for the timber wolves. Uh, as you guys can see, they are actually sleeping in their uh, like night quarters. They have those little, uh, almost like rooms for them to sleep. Uh, and all of the backstage props in here. And also here we have like a, a entrance to the habitat using an airlock. Uh, and of course, again, we are on the roof. Why do you do this to me, game? Uh, why? Uh, so we had this like bigger saw, bigger thing for them. Yeah, a uh, bigger room just simply so they can uh, go in here and chill out just the whole pack of the wolves. And if they need to be separated, uh, there are those smaller uh, rooms and stuff like that. Here's the holding area for them. And here we have uh, the enclosure, but we will go uh, and see the enclosure for the right side. So from the front and uh, just in a second mm, so let's follow this path back okay 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 uh, we cannot go any faster uh, and yeah uh, this is the timber wolf enclosure we have this little waterfall in here uh, and yeah really nice i really like it uh, the wolves are surprisingly spending a lot of time uh, near the water section 
Uh, but yeah, I really wanted to use some elevations in here. Oh, we have the babies. Uh, and yeah, this was after the Euro Pack came out. Uh, and when it comes to the Euro Pack, we actually have uh, something cool on the other side. Uh, so this is the uh, European Badger enclosure, the first annual I think that I've built uh, when the uh, Euro Pack was added. Uh, so they have this little cave in here. They have a burrow, uh, so they can sleep in the burrow. They are have a lot of time, spending a lot of time in, in in it. But here we have our badger family. <laughs> there are some kids, I think, at, in here as well. Uh, so yeah, this they have this really nice enclosure with this really nice uh, glass barrier in here. Uh, and also, I don't know why it is not working, but in here we have should have this camera for uh, for them to, to for the guests to be able to see them sleeping inside of uh, their uh, they borrow. And if we go here, uh, we have the access to the habitats, and in here is a little little shelter with those stalls so they can uh, be closed in here uh, and stuff like that so okay going back uh, we have uh, again what is it <laughs> yeah all those unfinished bits so yeah firstly we'll go and see this site uh, though this is basically a little canid section of our zoo we have the timber wolves in here we have the dingo uh, so as you guys can see here are those Australian dogs in here they have a really nice and very rocky enclosure uh, being inspired a bit by just Australian deserts and stuff like that uh, and on the other side we have the Usuri doll from the Southeast uh, Asia animal pack uh, so we have a pack of those guys. This guy actually got a little rest skin, a little like this uh, model was updated, so it looks a bit better right now, but uh, I don't know if uh, many of people actually noticed that because I didn't see any a lot of information about this on YouTube, but yeah, they got a little rest skin and they look really nice right now. So this they have this little den, uh, really dense enclosure with this water section here, uh, so yeah. I really like it and they also have this little cave in here they can go in there and but yeah let's move on because in here we have the outdoor uh, uh, enclosure for the koalas with those uh, really cool rock formations uh, and uh, in the back and uh, the climbing frames using some implied uh, implied eucalyptus feeders uh, so we have the koala eating from this elevated uh, food platform. Uh, there's one here, and here's also a little like water section for those guys. Uh, so uh, we have actually two koalas uh, habitats in here, two koala habitats in this zoo. One is outdoor, one is indoor. And my idea was that they will be moved from the indoor to outdoor in case, in uh, depending on the weather simply and the time of the year. So in, during the winter, they will spend time inside of this building, which is a small mammal house. This is the first of those big uh, projects that we did on the channel. So this is one of them. Uh, those uh, signs in here are from the workshop. This is my sign uh, back when we didn't have the uh, the billboards and uh, we had to do them ourselves. So if you go inside, we'll get teleported again. Why are you doing this to me game? Why I cannot have a nice tour here on the channel? Uh, so we, maybe we'll do... Okay. Uh, yeah, so here's the indoor part of and the backstage of the koala enclosure. One of the koalas got boxed. I don't know why, unfortunately. Uh, so we'll unbox it. Uh, and here are the all the enclosures that are here in the small animal house, the indoor parts. Uh, so we have the, uh, again, boxed animals in the very weird uh, position. I don't know what happened here. Uh, so let's help this poor... A little guy uh, so yeah this is the uh, red panda habitat uh, really like inspired by Nepal and uh, I don't know just mountain regions and stuff like that uh, they have this like elevated sleeping space in here and they are actually sleeping in here as a waterfall uh, so yeah I really like it uh, 
And here we have a pangolin uh, habitat. Uh, pangolins can actually climb in real life. In the game they didn't implement that, so I still wanted to give them some uh, climbing frames, uh, climbing opportunities. Here, here are the like sleeping uh, areas for them. Oh, I actually missed something because all of those uh, enclosures have the uh, little uh, like backstage, uh, backstage areas, just simply for the keepers. So here's one for the uh, red pandas. Uh, here is one for the pangolins as well. Uh, if we'll go here, we can see it. Yeah. Uh, so a little backstage for the pangolins. Uh, in here, uh, in here we have a backstage for the animal that is living next to the pangolins. And this is the uh, the artwork. Uh, so I showed you uh, like uh, a little time ago this habitat to compare it to my artwork habitat from the Desert Adventure Park, showing how much I grown as a creator in Planet Zoo. Uh, so yeah, this was I think the first habitat from the small mammal house. I like it. It is very plain, but I like it. I had this idea of this like look inside of the artwork borrow so they can enter here and the guests are still able to see them. Uh, here's actually the uh, uh, indoor part of the koala house, of the koala enclosure in the small mama house, sorry. Uh, so they can use all of those climbing frames. I don't know where I where where are they? They were probably all boxed. Uh, so yeah, sometimes this happens, unfortunately. And here we have the um, the giant otter. So in the indoor part, they have this like little cave for them to sleep, and they have this entire uh, water section for them uh, to enjoy. And of course, this is more like a uh, tropical sections section for those guys. And in here as well, we have a little uh, backstage stuff for the keepers. Uh, so if you'll go out uh, there we will go and see the outside parts of those enclosures. But firstly, we'll go and see another small mammal that was added to the game after I finished that. And this was the Binturong. So this is the Binturong habitat uh, with uh, that is a little like down here in the earth or something. Uh, yeah, the Binturongs actually are climbing. This was kind of sort of like a failed <laughs> thing, but uh, they are now able to climb. I think that they fixed something because when I was doing this habitat and shooting the uh, cinematic shots, they didn't want to climb for me at all, but it was fixed. So uh, it's cool to see that they fixed that. Uh, so yeah, one of the very like old enclosures in this in the zoo, in this game and so on. Uh, if you go in here, uh, there's actually uh, a first uh, keeper talk that I did for the animal, I think. Uh, so this is the indoor part for uh, the uh, for the binturongs. We actually have a little baby in here. Uh, so during the winter, they will be just living in here. We also have uh, some information about the binturongs and our binturongs in this zoo. And in here, if I am correct, we can see, yeah, this is the entrance to the habitat, just. Uh, okay, so let's go this way and let's go back. Uh, here's actually the schedule for the talks. Oh my God, I thought about everything <laughs> in those old times. Uh, so here's a little sign for the small mammal house. And if we will continue in this way, we will see all the enclosures for the uh, small mammals. Oh, here is the artwork in here. Uh, here's actually uh, the Bakshan camel habitat, so we have already been here. Uh, so we, we can see the artworks. Uh, here is the giant otter habitat with a little waterfall and a little river. And they have their big water section in here. Actually, one is swimming. As you guys can see, we can go down there and see the underwater viewing for those guys. Uh, so it's really cool, it's really deep, <laughs> as you guys can see, because I wanted to make sure that they will be able to dive. And they are able, so it's really nice to see. Um, but yeah, let's continue. Because in here we have two more enclosures, uh, and th those, one are, those, are, those ones are closed ones. <laughs> so we have this mesh thing in here. 
Uh, so because those animals are just simply climbing, so I wanted to make sure that they won't be able to escape. And this is also inspired by one of the zoos. I don't remember the name, but uh, yeah. Uh, there's a small like uh, elevated cave that they can use to sleep in. Uh, so uh, really nice enclosures. Uh, I must say that I like those two way better than I like the ones that are on the other side. Uh, here's a pangolin enclosure. Uh, you can see the pangolins in here. And they have also a little cave uh, for them uh, to sleep in. Uh, okay, and that was it. Here's a little like backstage for the Benturongs. Mm, we can actually go uh, in here to see the newest part of the zoo. So, uh, if you go here, in the back you can see something very exciting. It's some of my favorite thing in the, of the entire zoo. But uh, firstly, we have those two backstage stuff on both sides. Uh, so in here we have the backstage for uh, the California Sea Lions. This is the building that we missed. Uh, so if you go through this door, we can see the shelter for them. Actually, one of them is sleeping in here, so it's so cool. Uh, and they have also this indoor pool in here. And yeah, really nice building. I really like the uh, ceilings, the roof of this building. It's really like, interesting. I think it mimics, because it was inspired by one of the zoos, and it mimics a bit the waves on the sea or something like that. And if we'll go uh, in here, excuse me, I'll just take a sip of water. Okay, sorry guys for weird sounds. Uh, if we'll go here. We actually will go uh, to the backstage stuff of one of the uh, most recent animals added to the game. Uh, so this is the backstage for the wombats. Uh, we will see the enclosures in a second, but yeah, here's a little backstage for our guys from Australia. And if we'll continue this way, we'll go and we'll have to take this very long, long road for the stuff. And this is the shelter for both the dolls and the dingoes. Uh, they have little like holding areas in here. Uh, here's the doll side. Uh, so as you guys can see, those guys are enjoying it in here. Uh, they have this like sand piece because uh, I saw that in some of the enclosures for the dogs, they have those. They like to play in the sand and stuff like that. Uh, some freezers and stuff like that. And here's a little separation area and this like uh, this is called like the practice room or something where they do all this like they teaching them to uh, do those all those uh, medical procedures and stuff like that. Uh, okay, here is the uh, the side for the dingoes. This is just completely the same. I wanted to say, but again, I am teleported. Oh my god, to the roof! Why does this happen to me all the time? Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah really similar to the ones that we just the one that we just saw okay and let's go and see and uh, the exciting parts <laughs> uh, the parts that you always wanted to see so uh, our uh, our wildcat house but before that obviously you will see the outside part of the wombat habitat uh, so, uh, this is really nice. I must say that this is definitely one of my favorite enclosures because of this rock wall using the stalagmites from the Twilight Park. So the Wombats have this cave in here and they have this like really uh, like dry enclosure with those really cool barriers for the guests. And here you can see our little long Wombats enjoying this habitat. Uh, so yeah, really, really cool one. Uh, and also there is this like uh, indoor part for them to uh, be held during the winter. And the guests can still, still see them if when they are held in here. But yeah, this is how the enclosure for the Wombats looks. Okay, and now let's see the most recent thing that I think everyone wanted to see. The Wildcat House. I must say that unfortunately I didn't have time to finish it, uh, to, to finish the things that I just told you guys about in the last video. So uh, the indoor part is a bit not finished, but the outdoor is pretty much finished. So let's firstly maybe see uh, all the outdoor uh, habitats. So 
Uh, if we will continue this way, uh, we will uh, actually follow the uh, order of the cats that I was adding to this zoo and we'll also go through uh, all the climates. I mean, we'll start with the colder ones. So at first we have the snow leopard and here we have this really cool view inside of the snow leopard enclosure. Uh, so yeah, this is it. And if you'll go here, we will uh, see this moat and uh, the view inside of this outside part of the snow leopard enclosure. Uh, really inspired by like a taiga biome and stuff like that. They can climb those thatch trees. They are probably all inside there. Uh, so yeah, this whole building and this whole idea was inspired by the Alfred Brem house in a tier park in Berlin. Uh, so yeah, as you guys can see and hear a lot of Berlin in this zoo, a lot of stuff inspired by Berlin. Uh, but yeah, this is the cougar enclosure. Uh, so uh, we are going a little warmer, but not so much. But actually cougars live in different kinds of environments. Uh, so here is the one enjoying our little uh, tree. Uh, so, okay, a little funky. But yeah, he's definitely climbing the tree. Uh, so we have this really nice, like, uh, taiga forest inspired habitat with a little water section and a waterfall. Uh, so a little bit more, like, dense than the, uh, than the um, snow leopard one. Okay, and if you'll go here, what I actually should do. Okay, we can actually see this thing. Uh, like, we can go see through this waterfall uh, the rest of this enclosure and okay let's enter the house briefly and just to exit it i will make sure to showcase that in a second but this is the other uh, side of the the house and here we have the siberian tiger with one of my favorite habitats of this entire uh, house entire uh, wildcat house. So here we have the Siberian tigers with a lot of high elevations. They can actually climb those uh, those rocks in here. Uh, a huge mode for them. We have some babies in the back as you guys can see and they are using this quite a lot to sleep on. So really cool thing to see. Uh, on the other hand side, we have uh, the Amur Leopard enclosure. This was actually not planned, but when it was added with the conservation pack, I just needed to have it. This is one of the most beautiful cats in the game. I love this pattern of those spots on its body. Really, really beautiful. Oh, it actually did a crazy jump for us. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this is like a more of a cage uh, with uh, some of the rock formations that they can actually climb on uh, and some other climbing frames and stuff like that. We'll see the uh, indoor parts in a second. And here is a little like pride rock uh, for our lions. Uh, so we have the lions living in here. Uh, this uh, can actually be viewed from all of the angles. Uh, so uh, yeah, here is one of the lionesses uh, in here uh, and we have this entire habitat for them with a little holding area in here. Uh, we cannot see it too well, but this was meant to be that way uh, for the guests not to disturb them or actually the male is using it right now. Um, but yeah, this is basically where our zoo stops and it's not finished, so we need to go back here uh yeah here's this huge mode for them we have this actually uh, the statue of the lion in here so you know that we are in the wildcat section of the zoo and if we'll enter this uh this area in here i mean the building will also again quickly exit it to see two more enclosures and uh, this is the cheetah enclosure a very very like filled with tall grasses because I know that the cheetahs like to hide in the grasses. I don't know if they're in here or inside, uh, but uh, if we'll go in here, we can see their habitat. I must say that I really like it. One of, also, I think that this is my second favorite, <laughs> to be honest. And uh, this just looks like a typical cheetah enclosure. And in here we have more of the green lush and tropical enclosure, still trying to use uh, things that would grow in this biome. 
uh, but this is the uh, one for the Jaguars. So yeah, all of those cards are inside. Like what a pity. Um, but yeah, some of the they have some of the climbing opportunities. They have a moat uh, as well. And yeah, this is how their habitat looks. So you guys can have a look. Okay, and now let's go inside to see the inside part of the wildcat house. You have this little planter for the cactuses in here and you have uh, this uh, fountain uh, with the cats in here and this really cool detail of this uh, skylight in here. And in the middle, uh, we have one of my uh, like pre like very recent creations, which is the clouded leopards uh, indoor enclosure, like very uh, jungly and dense enclosure for the clouded leopards. I'm sure that they are somewhere here. They have those like climbing frames on those walls. Oh yeah, so one of them is actually in here. Uh, but yeah, Matt, maybe let's first see actually uh, what we should do. And here's the inside part for the uh, for the snow leopards. I don't know where the snow leopards are, uh, but all of those enclosures have their backstage areas. So uh, the backstage area for the snow leopards is actually in here. So here we have the staff room, uh, some of the planters, which is so, so cool. Uh, this is just to so, so the guests can see the planters from the outside. Uh, and here we have the in-store part for the snow leopards. And yeah, the, here they are sleeping. Uh, and here we have a little baby in here. Uh, so yeah, this is the indoor, uh, the backstage stuff for the snow leopards. If you go in here back, uh, we can actually enter this uh, door as well. And here we have a bigger uh, like backstage area with uh, more of those you know staff rooms and so on. And here we have the backstage area for the jaguars. So again, yes, they are here sleeping, maybe not sleeping, but enjoying the backstage stuff. So yeah, also two of those night quarters. And here is the entrance to the indoor part of the jaguar habitat. So let's go back here and let's continue this way. To see all of those indoor parts uh, as i told you guys this is not finished i want to add some stuff on the walls i want to add a lot of planters in here to make it look a bit more like interesting add some benches on those huge corridors and um, but yeah this is the the backstage for the clouded leopards uh, so a lot of them they are looking like really similar but uh, i wanted to have backstages for all of those guys here we have the cougars uh, so a bit more like taiga inspired habitats uh, also there's a backstage and on the other side there there's this last uh, the last enclosure of the entire house the uh, the caracal enclosure in here so if you'll go this way we can actually enter the in the backstage stuff for the cougars uh, okay, here is one, as you guys can see. Uh, okay, so this was it. And here we have this like very large back indoor enclosure for the, uh, for our, uh, how they call it? The, the tigers. Yeah, this is what I wanted to say. And I really like this detail of this window in here. Uh, so this is their indoor enclosure with a little water section. And we can actually enter the, uh, the backstage stuff for them in here. So they have those bigger uh, like night quarters. Uh, and in here, the staff can enter the outdoor part of their enclosure. But here we have a mama tiger with a little child. And yeah, I really love those uh, windows in here. Okay, but moving further. My throat is dying at this point, guys. <laughs> so uh, if my voice sounds a little like weird, excuse me. Uh, here we have the Amur uh, leopard enclosure, like indoor part. They can also use all of those uh, like uh, uh, elevated, I don't know, rock formations. Yeah, is what I wanted to say. And here we have the indoor parts, like the backstage part for the uh, leopards in here. And uh, in here is the rest of the 
Caracal and Closure. Thank you, by the way, but for all the, the really positive comments on that. You guys really enjoyed that, so thank you so much. Uh, there's one car of the Caracals in here, actually. And this is the indoor enclosure for uh, the Caracals with this really cool uh, detail of this little uh, canyon thing. And also they have uh, the uh, rock formations that they can climb in the back. Um, but yeah, this is the Caracal enclosure. And in here we have the enclosure for the lions. Uh, so another bigger one, uh, because we have a group of the lions in here, uh, they also can go up there and sleep there uh, in here. Uh, and those are uh, the night quarters, like the sleeping quarters for them, uh, and bigger ones uh, and stuff like that. And also what happened in here? Great, this is just great. <laughs> and here's one of our lions in here. Okay, so let's move back uh, and let's see the other two indoor habitats. Uh, here is the backstage for the cheetahs. Mm, so they are using those to sleep in here. Uh, and if you'll go back here, we probably see some cheetahs. Here's again the caracal enclosure. And the cheetahs should be somewhere here. Yes, here they are sleeping on this rock formation. Uh, a little more like savanna inspired habitat. Uh, here's the other part. Others look at the uh, clouded leopards enclosure. And in here we have the indoor part for the jaguars. Uh, uh, so more jungly part with some of the climbing frames and also uh, elevated like platform for them to sleep in. Uh, so yeah, this was basically it. We saw the entire zoo and it took us a lot, about two hours. <laughs> I knew that this video will be a long one. Uh, so let's now skip uh, a bit to the part when I will show you guys the zoo from the above and I will talk a bit more about the plans for the future of the zoo. So this is the Elm Hill City Zoo from the above. As you guys can see, we are slowly filling up the entire map, but we are like for sure missing some of the areas in here and in here and so on. Uh, but yeah, this is our zoo. As you guys can see, the Wildcat House is actually huge uh, with all those enclosures. Uh, so here we have the entrance. When it comes to the entrance, I think that the parking lot is way too small. So I really want to extend it. I want to add things like a bus stop uh, and uh, other things that you will normally see uh, in those uh, places like this. Sorry for that. Uh, we also need some pavements and stuff like that. But this is this. So those are the things that I will do at the very end. Uh, so here we have the enclosures that we've seen. This is the kangaroo. The, the desert house, the mm, birds, here's the wetlands house uh, with uh, all the wetlands section basically with the uh, ungulates in here. Here's our uh, giraffe uh, house, really nice, looking nice from this perspective. Uh, and this is basically our African section. Here we also have the bats and the scimitar oryx. Uh, so in the future, I will fill those things, those empty parts in here with other African animals. So this is the plan. Uh, here we have, of course, our rhino and elephant house here we have the uh, the newer uh, main wolf and the giant anteater habitat in here i actually plan to uh, add the armadillos really soon uh, and we'll continue in this way but more on that later uh, this is the wildcat house as you guys can see i need to finish the paths a bit in here and to add some foliage around it and i need to add some things on the roof and stuff like that and it will also be finished uh, here we have the wombats out plan to add the wallabies and the emu somewhere near it so probably in here uh, so it will have a little australian section and we have the dingoes really close so i think it makes uh, sense so here's the penguin house uh, the, the those are the seals this is the california sea lions uh, the binturongs and uh, the some of the ungulates that we've seen those is the llamas 
the babirusas. Here we have the insect house and we'll add the butterflies next to it. So it will be somewhere here. Uh, here was this huge uh, like uh, area for the temperate and taiga animals. Uh, here is a newer ar area for the uh, foxes. Here are the raccoons and the skunks. Here are the red deers. Here we have the Pshewalski horses and the timber wolves. And this is basically it that we have in the zoo. So, when it comes to the plans for the near future, or the near and the future that will come <laughs> somewhere in the future. Uh, so we have uh, quite a lot of things that I still want to do. I think that we are more than half done with the zoo. Uh, still some of the things that I wanted to add, but maybe uh, more, more is actually done. Uh, of course, we have to fill some of those empty spaces, but uh, yeah. So the plans for the future are uh, that we need to finish the the African section for sure. So this is what I will focus on. Uh, here, here's the section that I really want to finish, and maybe this is what I will focus on now. Uh, after I will add the grasslands animals for sure. Uh, I want to start building a reptile house uh, with uh, habitats for the crocodiles, with, for the, with the turtles, then probably the monitors, uh, the Komodo dragon and stuff like that. Uh, so I think I will add uh, the reptile house in here because it makes sense. We have more of those bigger buildings and stuff like that in here. So uh, I will do it here. Here we have the butterflies. Maybe I will also squeeze in here the uh, American bison because I still don't have it and I really want to add it here uh, but here we have we'll have the reptile house somewhere in here uh, here I want to eventually build something like a staff hub uh, or I don't know the veterinary clinic uh, the stuff for the simply keepers and stuff like that uh, here's the African section as I told you guys uh, somewhere in here I will add the primates so we will build a primate area with some of the bigger apes and smaller monkeys I probably don't want to build another house because we have quite a lot of those so we'll do like separate enclosures but uh, something I think uh, similar to the wombats so there is an outdoor part and the house or a small shelter that the guests can have a look into uh, some of them maybe will have the, like an island habitats or something like that but yeah the primates will probably be added somewhere here uh, in here I thought about adding the bears and uh, build like a little bear area in here because we still don't have bears in the zoo and I really want to build for them uh, so we'll have them uh, for sure as well and uh, maybe we'll build something like a tropical house as well uh, I really like the house like in I think it is located in Paradisa with those elevated paths uh, that are like those I don't know uh, almost like a wooden bridges uh, uh, that are elevated and they guess have this really nice views inside of those indoor, habita indoor habitats so this is what I thought about and this is basically it if I am not uh, wrong of course we'll be continue adding uh, the animals from the uh, from the different uh, packs that will come uh, let me just have a look at my list of the things that I want to build because I have a list in here. Yeah, tropical house, uh, the primate section, the bear section and the reptile house and the African section. And this is basically it. So as you guys can see, still a lot of enclosures, but not as many um, things to build. Maybe we'll also do another entrance to the LQ City Zoo at some point, uh, because some of the zoos have actually more than one entrances and this one is quite small. So why not add another one? And also we will probably, uh, if I will have uh, time and space and so on, uh, uh, we will for sure like uh, close the entire zoo so continue with the fences that we started uh, and do some of the things uh, like smaller buildings and stuff uh, like outside of the fences just to make it look a bit more realistic and stuff but yeah this is basically it I know that this was has been a very long video but you guys wanted to see the entire zoo and I had to go inside of all of the buildings as you as I told you guys uh, the blueprint for this zoo 
Zuzu is, is down in the description so you can download it and you can play with it yourself. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed our little tour. Uh, if you did, please consider to subscribe to my channel. That will really mean the world to me. We are almost on 13,000 subscribers. So it will be amazing if, we, if you will be able to hit that at the end, by the end of the year. Uh, that would really be uh, really awesome. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up down below. Ring the bell if you want, if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. Uh, and uh, of course, comment down below what, what is your favorite habitat in the Elm Hill City Zoo. Maybe you have a favorite section or something. And what do you think about the plants uh, for uh, our zoo? Okay, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.